Chapter 11, Section 6 in the 7th grade workbook is entitled Probability of Independent and Dependent Events. This is the homework helper for Chapter 11, Section 6. So in the top part, you're supposed to decide whether each set of events is independent or dependent and explain our answer. So dependent, again, as you saw in the note presentation, means that two events are somehow affecting each other. So meaning that the probability of what happens the first time is going to impact what happens the second time. What you'll probably see most likely to happen there is the total number of possibilities is going to change the second time based on what happened or what we did the first time. Independent events describes two events that are not related or don't affect each other's probabilities. So what you're going to see there is possibly two different things. Independent could be two events that just totally don't have anything to do with each other like flipping a coin and rolling a die. They don't have anything to do with each other. So those would be independent because they just don't interact. But let's say it is one universal set of events, one, thing, one set of things that is related. As long as I don't change the probability the second time compared to the first time, they would also be independent events. So in one, where it says a student spins a spinner and chooses a Scrabble tile, well, spinning the spinner and choosing the Scrabble tile don't have anything to do with each other. And because they don't have anything to do with each other, that makes them independent events. The question is asking me here to list why. Well, they're independent events because they have nothing to do with each other. If we look at number two, it says a boy chooses a sock from a drawer of socks, then chooses a second sock without replacing the first. So now at least the events are related. But what we need to figure out is are they impacting each other? So the boy picks the sock out of the drawer. So let's just say there's 10 total socks in the drawer. Then he's not going to put it back and pull another one. So then the second time there would only be nine socks in the drawer. Well that means what I did the first time is going to affect my probability the second time because the bottom number in those fractions is going to change. And because the bottom number in those fractions are going to change, that means all of a sudden we have dependent events. Why are they dependent? Well, in this particular case, wouldn't always be the answer, but in this particular question, they're in, uh, dependent rather because what happens the first time affects my total the second time. And in question three, you're continuing to identify independent and dependent events. Now as we head on down towards the bottom here, in four, five, six, and seven, you're going to find the uh, probabilities based on the scenario. And in four, five, and six, they're talking about independent events. So in number four, it says we're picking a red checker from a bag of nine black checkers and six red checkers. Then we're going to put it back in and pick another red checker. So on the first draw, what's the probability of me pulling a red checker? Well, there are six red checkers in the bag, and there are a total of 15 checkers. The six and the nine goes together for a total of 15. So I've got a 6 out of 15 chance of pulling a red checker the first time. Now, the scenario says I put it back and then I'm going to pull again, and my goal is to pull red again. So the probability hasn't changed because there's still going to be 15 total checkers in the bag and still 6 red checkers in the bag. So the second time, I also have a 6 out of 15 chance. The rules that you saw in a couple different sections here now tell us when we have two different probabilities and we want to find the combined probabilities, we multiply. So I'm going to multiply together 6 out of 15 and 6 out of 15, and when I multiply that together, that's going to give me 36 out of 225. So 